So we're back. We're back with Mel and Kim to talk about the next biologic in line um, for both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, and it's called Vedolizumab. It's Kim, I'll start with you. Just give me a little background on what we are going to give this patient. Yeah, so um, the principle is, is ultimately the same. It is about blocking a yeah. cell responsible for inflammation in the immune response. A receptor, kind of, yeah. Yeah, a receptor. Um, so this one targets a different cell. It targets um, its integrin, so yeah. it's the alpha-4, beta-7 integrin receptor that it blocks. Yeah. This is found more specifically within the gut, so it is technically more gut-specific, so more topical to where your disease will be. Um, so it acts there to decrease the inflammation in the gut and ultimately heal the bowel wall. That's okay. what we're trying to do. So you want to stop these integrin receptors and from a gastroenterologist's point of view, it's a, it's a cool drug because it concentrates, it's gut-centric. Yeah. It, 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 it chooses to block the integrin receptors that are in the gut and not much else anywhere else in the body. And because so, of that, it means you can have less side effects associated with this oh, medication. Okay, good. So how are we, we've decided to give this, a lot of ulcerative colitis patients get this, uh, some Crohn's patients get this. They do. So Mel, I, I, once you've reached a decision about, you know, at the MDT, that we're going to go down this route, what are you going to say to the patient and how, we, how do we proceed? So it's about choice. So, yeah. um, and. Uh, this video is really to explain how vedolizumab is given. Okay. So that's what I'll do now. So we give vedolizumab as a drip. You have a loading dose as a drip. Okay. You come to our infusion unit, so you'll be having a, 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 a you'd be seated on the infusion unit. The drip itself for the drug lasts for thirty minutes. You stay with us for an observation period afterwards. Uh, at the moment, that is two hours after the first two, and then one hour after uh, thereafter. Um, the infusion itself, um, most people get on absolutely fine with. There's no problems, and again, it's uh, you're sitting on the infusion unit. They get there's tea and coffee. You can bring food if you like, mm -hmm. um, and there's plenty of plugs. You can watch films and do your uh, write theses. All sorts of things go on in the infusion unit. Uh, so the drip itself, as I said, lasts for 30 minutes. You stay with us for the observation period and then you go home. Two weeks later, you return for the same again. Four weeks after that, you return for another dose, this time with only a one hour observation period. If you have Crohn's disease, we then bring you back four weeks after that. So you have a 10 week infusion as well. Uh, then after that you go on to eight weeks. If you have ulcerative colitis, you go straight from the third dose right on to eight weekly maintenance uh -huh. doses. So you come in every eight weeks. So after, every time for an infusion? Yes, every time for an infusion. Yeah. You don't have to do that. You can actually change after the third, after you've had the three what we call loading doses, you can have an injection and this is using this device here. So eight weeks after your last infusion, you would have um, a dose uh, of this. These would be delivered to you at home, and a company would of nurse, uh, a company sends them out, and um, nurses will come out to teach you how to use it straight, um, and will give you the first dose. <clears throat> so they, what will happen is with this, it's stored in the refrigerator, a normal domestic refrigerator between two and eight degrees centigrade. Uh, you should take it out of the fridge for about thirty minutes before you're due to give it, so it can warm up. But when you're due to give it, you need to be well to have it, as in no coughs, colds or sneezes or anything like that. You just take the top off. And again, I'm going to show you on my arm because it's easier for you to see. But you just push the device down. Well, you hear a click. And you hear a click and then another click when it's done. Okay. okay. This is a dummy pen, so it's slightly quicker click than you'd expect. Okay. okay. Um, and then that's it, you, you throw it away. So the drug is in your subcutaneous the tissue. The drug is in the subcutaneous tissue. And will start tissue. to slowly dissipate. That's right. 
With this one, this drug does contain citrate, so there is a slight sting. So it is important that you do remove it from the fridge for at least 30 minutes to warm up. And Mel, that's not where we usually inject it, is it? It's usually in your belly or your thigh? Or... Yes, on the top of your thigh or around your belly button is yeah. the best place to actually go for. Yeah. I'm just demonstrating around because then you can all see what I'm doing. And to be clear, this is instead of turning up to the hospital for drips. That's right, yes. Yeah, very convenient, can be done at home. You don't have to, you know, come in, pay for parking, go in, take up a big seat and, you know, uh, get observed and things like that. Initially, that observation period is important. It's important to say that the reason why we let you do your thesis or read your comics mm -hmm. or whatever is to make sure that you don't have an allergy to the drug That's that right. we can quickly act on there. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. The only issue is obviously that because you are doing this at home and it is subcutaneous, it will be every two weeks yeah. rather than the infusions are every eight weeks. Okay. So it's just bearing that in mind that it's the balance between what you prefer as well. Okay, okay. Anything else to add? Because I think that was quite really uh, simple mm -hmm. and it's it's a very nice drug. In it is a very nice drug. We do, um, when, when you have infusions, we do blood tests before you have your infusions. When you're at home, we do like to make sure we have um, we are monitoring bloods. We tend to do that every three months or so, um, and uh, you might have these through the hospital. We might sometimes ask your GP to do them. And if you're on a, a drug such as azathioprine, where you have regular monitoring anyway, the bloods tested will be the same for this as for your azathioprine. So we uh, just need to make sure we keep an eye on you. You will then also see the consultant at regular intervals, but particularly once a year, just to make sure whether there's a decision to continue or to have a break from the drug. Okay. But this will be discussed in more detail when we see you face So to, to wrap up, no fancy turning up for blood tests frequently, nothing like that. Right? No extra blood tests, no. Okay. Sounds pretty good. Kim, you want to finish up on anything? Or I think I think we've, 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 I think we've wrapped, it wrapped it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you.